The USA and the Soviet Union's relationship was extremely tense in 1962, and there are reports that the Soviet Union is about to unleash an atomic weapon. Americans became engulfed in panic, often building bomb shelters in their backyards. Dr. Calvin puts a lot of effort into his bunker, storing food that will deal with for many years. Calvin and Helen, his pregnant wife, host a party at their home one day. Everything is going well until they watch a President Kennedy broadcast on TV, during which he declares that they are organizing a covert operation against the Soviet Union. Although there are no specifics, Calvin forces out all of the visitors and drags his wife into the bunker because he still feels that a war is going to break out. A few minutes later, a plane is flying over the city when it abruptly detects a mechanical issue. The pilot is powerless to stop it from crashing straight into Calvin's house, completely ruining it. Calvin believes the war has begun as he hears the sounds and feels the hole shaking within the bunker and promptly closes the door. He tells Helen that while he can't open it by hand, the door will open by itself after 35 years, when the radiation in the atmosphere will have had time to stabilize. When the authorities finally turn up to look at the accident-related damage, they presume Calvin and Helen had perished in the collision because they are unable to detect any evidence of life. Helen detests life down there, but as the days go by, Calvin begins to feel at home. When her water finally breaks one day, her husband helps her give birth to a handsome baby boy. Days soon turn into years, and their son Adam grows into a clever boy. Calvin imparts all of his knowledge to him in the hopes that Adam will one day restore the nation to its former splendor. Calvin teaches Adam all the fundamentals of schooling, in addition to teaching him how to speak French and Latin, box and handle the stock market. Helen teaches him how to dance as well as how to handle household tasks. Adam fails to imagine so many people, so Calvin also gives him his collection of baseball cards and attempts to explain sports to him. Their boy, who is becoming more and more secluded, is being raised by both parents, who instill in him excellent manners but never use language. The family has no trouble setting a schedule that works for them and enables them to take care of plants, build an additional room for Adam, go pretend fishing in a tank, and go shopping in the mini-mart. They also have a lounge where people can hang out, read, and play games. Above them, the property where their home once stood is sold, and over time turns into a variety of businesses. It is a diner at first, followed by a pizzeria, and ultimately, a nightclub. When Adam turns 33 in 1995, his parents give him presents that they have personally crafted. He aspires to find the ideal companion one day as he blows out the candles. When Helen brings up the fact that there are only two years left, Calvin responds by saying he will miss this location, which makes Helen retreat into a separate room to let out her rage. The door opens on its own when the 35 years come to a close in 1997. The family is ready to leave, but Calvin advises them to stop and make sure everything is secure first. He puts on a radiation suit, removes the elevator, and enters an abandoned building that is now inhabited by a group of inebriated beggars. Melker passes out from shock after seeing a bright man emerge from the earth. After that, Calvin exits the building and is astounded by all the modifications. Graffiti abounds. People treat firearms like toys, adult stores brimming with merchandise repulsive to him, and strange-looking people whose speech he cannot comprehend. Fearful, Calvin runs back to the bunker and tells them that even if the air is clean, the area is still a wasteland full of insane mutants from the post-apocalyptic era. Helen eventually loses it when he says they have to stay in the bunker. She screams at him while telling him how badly she is being locked and how crucial it is that Adam interacts with the natural world. Calvin has a heart attack as a result of the dispute since he won't change his mind. Helen chooses to send Adam outside to acquire enough food to last a few years because Calvin is ill and the stocks are almost empty. She tells him to stay at the Holiday Inn and look for a girl who isn't a mutant, and she gives him some money and a shopping list. 
Calvin warns Adam not to go inside the adult film store due to the dangerous radiation levels inside before he leaves. When Adam eventually gets outside after packing, he finds Melker has created a small temple near the elevator to honor Calvin's family, who are revered as divine people. When Adam steps outside, he is overjoyed to view a variety of objects for the first time, including the wonderful sky, houses, trees, and even other people who think he's strange. He is very pleased about everything and greets everyone who passes by. However, he makes the mistake of calling a black woman a racial slur since he is so happy to meet someone with a different skin tone. He covers his nose and encourages others to follow Suit as he walks past the adult movie business. After that, he takes the boost and becomes extremely afraid when he feels the machina moving. He treats to converse with other passengers, but nobody understands him since he employs archaic terminology, leading them to believe he is strange. Adam eventually arrives at the grocery shop and begins to pick up everything on the list. Adam realizes he has no idea how to get back to the bunker when the butcher tells him if he places a larger order, it may be delivered to his residence. He flees the store in a panic, traveling several buses all day in an attempt to find the bunker, but to no effect. Running out of money, he goes into a hobby store to sell the baseball cards his father has. The store owner knows they are expensive and antique cards. But instead of telling Adam, he makes an offer to acquire the entire pack for just $500. Eve, the shop clerk, cuts them off before Adam can say yes, telling him he is being duped since each of those cards is worth anywhere from $4,000 to $6,000. After Evie abruptly leaves and abuses her boss, Adam is taken aback by her and begins to feel a crush on her. Adam begs Eve to drive him to the Holiday Inn as they exit the shop. Eve initially objects and tries to flee from him, but she soon comes around when Adam offers to give her two baseball cards as payment. Adam plays all the old songs on the radio during the voyage, which Eve finds very strange. Eve says nothing as she heads out the moment she lets Adam off at the hotel. Adam heads to his room, where he loves watching television in color after being astounded by the view from the 18th story as he looks through the window. In order to witness the sunrise, he also takes sure to get up extra early. The next morning, Eve goes to Adam's hotel to return the card since she feels bad about being paid so much for such a simple task. Adam offers her a job as his assistant and asks her to help him gather supplies for the bunker. Eve agrees, and they go shopping together for enough supplies to last two more years, hiring numerous trucks along the way. Adam surprises her by expressing his desire to find a wife. After shopping, Eve takes Adam to her house where he meets her roommate, Troy. Troy is impressed by the technology and starts asking Adam many questions. Adam lies, claiming to be from Alaska and visiting on business. Helen is inquisitive and takes the elevator. But when she exits, she notices Melker and his companions being strange and returns. The following day, Troy offers Adam new clothes to enhance his appearance. Over the next three days, Eve and Troy introduce Adam to new activities such as skating, dancing to modern music, and viewing the ocean. Adam becomes enthusiastic and jumps into the water without hesitation. He gets to watch a baseball game and realizes why his father enjoys it. One afternoon, Adam stands under the rain in awe. When Eve comes to check on him, Adam hugs her and expresses his joy, stating his father would consider this a miracle. Eve and Troy accompany Adam to an old-school swing club to find a wife, pushing him to be himself. Women in the club catch on to Adam right away by his good looks, polite attitude, and nice disposition. He notices Eve's opponent right away, and the two become friendly, which makes Eve envious. She pulls Adam aside and tells him that she wants a kind lady, not a skank, in his life. Adam then invites another female to dance, and the two of them rule the dance floor while Adam impresses everyone with his incredible dancing abilities. In an attempt to suppress her jealousy, Eve talks to her ex-boyfriend, who makes fun of Adam and challenges him to a duel. However, Adam swiftly scares the man away with his boxing skills. Eve, frustrated by the trouble, quits the club and returns home alone. 
Troy informs Eve that Adam has left the club with her opponent, prompting her to seek him out. She gets in the car, but is startled by a knock on the window and falls to the ground. Adam takes her inside and cares for her scrape, saying that he had to reject the other girls because he could not stop thinking about Eve. Adam expresses his feelings for Eve, and the two eventually kiss. Now that they're together, Adam chooses to finally tell Eve the truth about his family and home, as well as his desire to marry Eve so she can live with him in the bunker. Eve dismisses him as a schizophrenic who has successfully concealed his condition. Troy teaches Adam how to drive the next day by driving him around town. Adam discovers the adult video store and travels the road to the building above his bunker, where Melker has established a religion centered around the elevator. He runs back to Eve to tell her the exciting news, but is met by two psychiatrists. Adam initially appears friendly, but quickly flees when an opportunity arises. A doctor pursues him, while another attempts to contact the police. Eve intervenes and recognizes her mistake. Adam rushes to her and hands her his hotel key, allowing her to pay with her credit cards. He then flees in his rented truck, accidentally hitting the doctor's car. Eve and Troy arrive in Adam's hotel room and discover vintage items from the 1960s, including Calvin's stock certificates worth millions. These things let people understand that Adam was telling the truth. After being away from his parents for two weeks, Adam eventually makes it back to the bunker and gives them a hug. He brings in the goods, which Melker and his pals are loading, and tells them how beautiful the outside world is. Returning to Eve, she is frantic to find Adam, so Troy brings her to the adult video store, where they begin trampling the ground in the hopes of discovering the bunker. They decide to leave after, of course, finding nothing, but not before noticing Adam preparing to go into the adjacent building. Adam extends an invitation for Eve to meet his parents, as she quickly runs to him to give him a hug and kiss. Eve is extremely loved by Calvin and Helen. And as they are eating supper together, Calvin tells Adam about birds and bees. Adam, however, requests that his parents wait two months before beginning any plans for a new life. In the ensuing weeks, Adam and Eve sell Calvin's assets and construct a new house in the country that bears a striking resemblance to Adam's old home. After clearing up and eventually giving up alcohol, Melker also lends a hand. When everything is prepared, Adam invites his parents to the house and explains how they can gradually acclimate to the new environment in this way. Adam eventually reveals to Calvin that there was never an atomic war, that the bomb had actually been a plane that crashed into their home, and that the Soviet Union had crumbled later on when Helen and Eve were preparing dinner. Calvin starts making plans to construct a new bunker just in case, refusing to believe. Thanks for watching my video.